Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, everybody! Hope you brought home that hashtag Foot Clan title. Let's revisit the week, the studs, the stankers, and everything in between. Foot Clan! <laughs> oh! Yes! I hope you did it. I hope you got your hashtag Foot Clan title. I hope you won, or maybe tonight you just need a, a couple of things to fall your way so that you can be a fantasy champion. And Foot Clan, our friends over at Fantasy Champs are hooking us up better than they ever have in history. You can use a promo code free ring to get a free $60 <laughs> championship ring if you buy that with a trophy or a championship belt. I mean, you have to do it. You have to go get yourself a trophy or a belt and then use the promo code free ring and you get one of those Super Bowl championship looking rings. It's awesome. Check it out at fantasychamps.com and use the promo code free ring. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome to the show Monday, December 23rd. Congratulations to many of you who I have heard from on Twitter and Instagram and everywhere you are. You are shouting it from the rooftops. As you should be. And congratulations if you have won a hashtag Foot Clan title. Maybe it's the first time. Maybe it's one of many. Maybe your trophy case is filling up. It still feels just as sweet. It does. It doesn't. There's no like, there's no downgrading a championship. It's not like, well, this is my first. Or it's like. This is my 12th, so I don't care. No, it's, it's it's awesome. And we do have a big game tonight with some big-time players in it. I mean, the majority of the matchups that I was in this week has, you know, they have Aaron Jones or Mike Boone or Adam Thielen or Kirk Cousins, somebody from Monday night. So maybe it's mm -hmm. you're still waiting with anticipation. You're staring down the little projections number that means so much and so little, so much for your psyche and so little in actuality because if something goes sideways, you know. But it's fun. It's been a very fun weekend for many of you. Now, some of you. Oh, yes. Now, I, I want to tell two tales, all right? Tale number one, we, barring some sort of just like earth-shattering miracle, we are the official Sleeper Bowl champions. Oh, take that, Juju. <laughs> Take that, Ninja. Take that, Efron. <laughs> Which is awesome. That's incredible. Yes. And um, so that that's that's big time. But the, on the other side, there is the other side of the coin. And many of you out there are experiencing it because of a simple fact. You might have played Saquon Barkley yesterday. It's not good if you played against him. And in our League One championship game, things were going just fine. And then Saquon knocked on the front door. And before we could open it for him, he broke it down and took our heart and soul. At least he got overtime to continue yes. stabbing us in the heart. I yeah. mean, <laughs> it was – look, we scored the second most in the league of, as far as just rosters. Doesn't we, matter. Doesn't matter when you go up against the best. So hats off to Candace Patton. Uh, we, we lost in the League One, uh, but if we were going to lose – I would want to lose like that to an absolute buzzsaw. Kenyon Drake, Saquon, say, Barkley, Saquon Barkley, Saquon Barkley, Andrews. Barkley was the number one running back, currently the number one running back on the week. I'm going to be so bold to say he will remain yes. the number one on the week. Yes. No yeah. Mike Boone, four touchdown nights ahead. The, uh, the other running back that we were up against was Kenyon Drake, who's the number two uh, <laughs> on the week. Uh, what? Come on. Not fair. No. Redo. Also, Mark Andrews had no points going into halftime. Oh, uh, and also, uh, also with one the, minute and eighteen uh, seconds left before the half. Also, uh, the number one tight end on the week. So oh. yes, so yes, we, so we lost to a noble and yes. and worthy, worthy opponent. adversary. Yes, yes. So, um, lots going on. If you want to celebrate with a Foot Clan title shirt, the new twenty nineteen Foot Clan title shirts are up on the website shopballers dot com. I encourage you to purchase one. Mm. Gloat. 
and then repeat that process for the next 365 hey, days. We can all we can all get one now. That's I've, true. I've been thinking that I have to wait to see how my dynasty league plays right. out for that back to back ship. Yes. Uh but no, we're all champs. We won together. Yes. Yeah, and I I uh believe I will hold on to win the CBS title. Now, you need Mike Boone to not score 28 points. That is correct. And then you win. Correct. Yeah. And I need uh, I need Aaron Rodgers and Adam Thielen to not outscore Devonta Adams by 37 points. So, looking good. Looking, looking good. Real Jason good. finally nodding in Jason's we're going to renovate you a little bit in the in the off season. Well, watching games with you has been very interesting. We need a box to put me in that's out of the way. You need um, a, a box and then another box. Well, I, I brought this up, and this shows we're going to be reflecting on the studs and stinkers of the week. We're going to uh, talk a little bit about Week 17 waivers. If you're sitting here waiting to pick somebody up for a championship game next week, we know there's some of you doing that. We'll mention that throughout the show. It's a lot of reflection today. So it's reflection on Jason. And there was a point yesterday in the studio where I, I looked at Mike and I looked at Jason and I just said, like, what could be happening to where you would enjoy this day? <laughs> like, what possible outcome could happen on the field? Because at this point in time, Tyler Lockett and Zach Ertz, who you were facing, had zero points each. And at two separate points, you promised they were going to have the biggest second half of their life. Spoiler alert, they didn't. But I'm just trying to – we need to get you back to where you can enjoy a Sunday because yeah. your current state, like you'll, you've got two years left in life. That's it. And then well, you're gone. You're gone. You'll just I, expire on the couch, melt into it. See, I enjoy – Probably winning a title. I enjoy a year. It's, I, I win the title because of my pessimism. I'm convinced. This is not the outcome I wanted to come from this show, Mike. Thank you, Andy. Uh, what are your thoughts on this this matter? On on Jason watching the the games? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> he huh? he was up against Ertz and Tyler Lockett, who through halftime had scored zero points, and he was complaining about it. He was. I was tilting. I wasn't complaining that they had only scored zero points. No, I was, but you were. I was just still you worried. Were, you were complaining as in. That was not good enough. Like that They was weren't rolled out. <laughs> Ertz got back on the field. Not good enough. But scoring zero points. Two, two high-level fantasy players through the first half scored zero points. Against you in a championship game. <laughs> That's when you dance. That's not when you melt into a couch. I, the first catch that Zach Ertz had, Jason was like, Ugh, <laughs> uh, he's, he's outscored Noah Fant now. It's true. Just facts. Did, when you went into the matchup, did you think Noah Fant was going to outscore Zach Ertz? I had hopes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Your hope. Yes. Jason's dream. I, I, I figured it out. Your dream is to win 156 to nothing. That's right. Your that is my dream. You will be happy if you shut – you want the shutout. I want, I want the first <laughs> fantasy football shutout. I want that to be mine. And I, I'm fine with if it comes via injury. <laughs> just I just want a shutout. Um. Here's the schedule for this week, by the way. We've got Christmas Eve tomorrow and Christmas. We will not be um, giving you shows for the next couple of days. We'll be back on Thursday and Friday. And then next week, Monday, the footy nominations. Oh, yes. <laughs> the season-long awards on Thursday of next week. We'll have the footy winners. So there'll be a couple days there for you to vote, contribute your thoughts, show moments, nicknames, MV fantasy MVP, least valuable player, all of that stuff. And then we'll have truth episodes. Talk about those for a second. Uh, yeah, so the truth episodes, every year we get a lot of people very thankful that they listened because you those give context to how players performed, not just what their final stat lines on the season are. You can look at rankings and say, okay, Amari Cooper finished as the wide receiver 11, but did he help people win championships? Well, we joked that like Russell Wilson and Amari Cooper next week, five touchdowns each because it won't matter. Well, right, because week 17. But then his ranking will be... Well, I mean, like Russell Wilson, currently the quarterback five, uh, and has, uh, what do we get, six games as a top 12 quarterback? Six <laughs> times. It's not you. You're not winning titles with Russell no. Wilson. No, six times. Unless you got like CMC or something, and he'll finish as as a top ten quarterback. It's the last seven pre preposterous. The last seven weeks. Seven weeks for Russell Wilson. Uh, he is the quarterback twenty three 
having only one game inside the top 10, and it wasn't even a big blow-up game. It was the quarterback eight. He flat out sucked the second half of the year. I accept and the quarterback five if on the season. If you've been following the show, that's you, the truth. He's the quarterback five sucked. That's yes, the truth. That's the truth. You, of, you know that Jason and I have been having a spirited debate about Russell Wilson that began in, in the off season. I take my L because I the bet was he wouldn't be a quarterback one. <laughs> yes, I won, was, but uh, like it's, it's, it's it sucks to take that L when it's like this. This is what I was saying. This is what I was afraid would, could possibly happen. Yeah, his se- his season. Like to be fair, since I'm not, I wasn't part of the great hotel two hour lobby yes. debate over Russell Wilson. To be fair, part of the discussion about any quarterback is what options did you have outside of him, and what other players could have given you, you know, big weeks. His the stat you just threw out there. He still was a top 20 quarterback for the majority of those weeks. Now, he's finally giving you those pure stinkers over the last three weeks. But, um, you know, Jameis, far better for your fantasy team over the back half of the year. Josh Allen, far better. Kyler Murray, far better. And somehow... Matt Ryan, far better. Somehow Jameis... Carson Wentz, far better. Far better this week after throwing four interceptions. Man. (laughs) Yeah, if you want to look to another... You want to look to the negative... Uh, Part oh, of, uh, like, we faced Saquon and we faced Andrews and Drake in the League One. We also started Jameis. Yeah, yeah that, that, being, <clears throat> that, that felt really, really bad. That being said. Because it was on Saturday and you could sit there and yes. bask in that turd. We started oh, yeah. Jameis. It was in, warm. <laughs> it was so warm. It was <laughs> hot. Was, it was steamy. Was enveloped. No, but the thing is, is, we started Jameis in both leagues. Yeah. So we um, we won a championship with Jameis. That's right, Jameis. We did it. Thank you, Jameis. All because of you. <laughs> So, like I said, uh, big show today. We'll get into everything. A couple days off. Hope everybody out there enjoys the holiday, enjoys their Christmas Eve, their Christmas. I was in. The, I got. I got a couple more days of Christmas spirit left in me. Mm. You know. Nice. So I, on the way in, I was listening to Christmas carols, all of them by Kylo Ren. <laughs> <laughs> and by Kylo Ren, I mean like Josh Groban, because the actor plays the same. It's the same person, it's, right? Oh yeah, totally. Josh Groban is, is Kylo is, Ren. Yeah, it's just his moniker. Mm-hmm. That's why the big finale is just, you raise <laughs> me up. <laughs> no spoilers. Spoiler. No spoilers. <laughs> All right, Monday pun day time. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Saquon bark wee. Saquon, you a league. Too late, Quan Barkley. Oh, get- oh, that's a bitter Saquon owner. I get it. Sa- Saquon Tardy. Oh. Same same story. He was very late. Yeah, if you were in the playoffs with him, that was good. If, Higby if you baby weren't. one more time. Yes, that Higby baby one more time. That's that's top notch right there. Deshaun Watts suck. Oh, Not come nice. On. Come on. Where is Slayton? <laughs> Christmas McCaffrey. Oh, that's oh, wonderful. That's a very good Anthony one. Anthony Championship Killer? Mm. Maybe. Christian mm. jerk? Oh, that's <laughs> that's so petty, but true. What a jerk. Oh, Nick Scrub? Deshaun mm. Watson. You know. And TLC told us we don't want no scrubs. Mm. Listen, Brooks, I I appreciate the Monday Punday selections, and I know we had a lot of submissions, but you really gave us mostly bad situations here. <laughs> They're usually more yeah, bad than good. It's hard to find the good but ones. But on, on championship week, I mean, I like Christmas McCaffrey. My that, goodness. 15 receptions. You just said in, in your CBS league that you hopefully won the championship in. Yeah. He had over 30 points, and he didn't score a touchdown. It's preposterous. That is preposterous. It's impossible. It's all sorts of plosions. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's get into the rewind. Weekly Rewind. Well, this is crazy. You can't keep a running back healthy in Seattle right now. Chris Carson, hip injury, CJ Procise, broken arm, both out for the season. (laughs) And now we're sitting here talking about Marshawn Lynch. Beast mode. Coming back to Seattle for the playoffs. If you haven't heard this yet, there is some smoke to uh, the rumors the Marshawn Lynch has said he's planning to fly out to Seattle to talk to them. 
Um, that is insane. You I, you don't know the shape that Marshawn Lynch is in, but there are certain guys like him that I would just I would just trust. He's a beast. You would if, assume they're better than Travis Homer yeah. right off the street. If Marshawn Lynch gets signed this week. Do you play him? Marshawn Lynch is in my championship roster for oh week 17. Goodness. Really? See, I there don't is, think I don't have I don't oh have the guts to do that in week There's one in the first week. No doubt for me. None. Uh they play San Francisco like in a really big game. In a really important game. Yeah, zero chance they play Marshawn. Their team that Lynch. is predicated on the run. Yeah, he won't there, it was a pretty important big game this last week and the, against uh, an inferior opponent. Yeah, but the, I mean, it didn't work. They broke their bones. I mean, there's <laughs> nothing you could do. That Chris Carson looked great. I think it's crazy to play Marshawn Week One against San Francisco. It's not crazy. It's, it's insanity. Yeah, it's certifiably. It's nice insane. for the playoffs for Seattle. That's what. Marshawn it's will be. nice for the the public at large because the more Marshawn Lynch we get, the better. If so, so you ten carries for Marshawn Lynch. Lynch. <laughs> Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn. Lynch. Hopefully he's not Marshawn. Oh Lynch. no! I've I've also heard the name uh, C J Anderson floating around. Yeah. The, oh, oh, oh my spirit animal. James Connor. Oh this stinks, dude. This guy. If you started yeah. him, can you might have lost. Can he just wear armor? <laughs> like, <laughs> is that allowed? Can he have like an exoskeleton? Because I feel like he's a really good player if he could just stay healthy. Stop. Yeah. Knock, knock, knock. Will Fuller at the door. Once, one, two. Yeah. James Conner uh, and Will Fuller both out this week. <laughs> left early. Fuller had a great matchup. Conner had a great opportunity and went out. Mm. So now, you know, you week 17ers. Jalen Samuels saw 42 uh, snaps. I'm not sure I lean into that because there's a difference in the way the depth chart functions when you think you have somebody at the top mm -hmm. and who's active on game day versus what we saw without James Conner, which was more Benny Snell than Jalen Samuels. It will be Benny Snell, and it should be neither one because Benny Snell will get the the rushing work. Jalen Samuels will be involved in the uh, – Wait, wait, will be in there as well. They, right, they and, also, and this is Baltimore. That's, that's where I was that. getting. It's like you're, you're not – this isn't a matchup where you're playing these scrubs. All right, Mark Ingram had a calf strain. He might not be out there. He's, he he's won't be out there out. next week. Yeah. He's been ruled out this week, so – Gus Edwards, if you're in, you know, yep. If you're in a week 17 championship, he would be my clear cut number one. Surprisingly, even over Marshawn. Well, how are you feeling about Justice Hill? I feel the like rookie running back. I would. I'd play both of those guys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kyler Murray hamstring injury is not going to play next week. If he's your week 17 quarterback, he will score zero points for you. Mm -hmm. Hamstring injury, but they did beat the Seahawks in Seattle. The offense looked good. The defense looked good. There's a good nice vibes finish to the year in Arizona after I believe they lost six in a row. Now they've won the last two and winning in Seattle against a team that was currently the number one seed, or I should say previously the number one seed uh, in the NFC. That's that's good vibes for going into next year. And then uh, you guys all know Derek Henry was inactive. He's supposed to be back in week 17. If they win that game against the Texans, they're in the playoffs. What a world. Yeah. And then you have DJ Moore. This was disappointing. DJ Moore uh, yeah. sustained a concussion against yeah. the Colts, basically goosed you this week. It was really early in the game. He didn't have a chance to do much. And so that, you know, I, I went back and forth on DJ Moore all week, and I cited you didn't that, You didn't predict the concussion, Jay. I, and I cited that I am in on DJ Moore. I would have played him. I know a lot of people out there did, and that stinks. Obviously, one injury can be overcome. I know in our league of record, it looks like the team that is going to be the champion, they had DJ Moore in their lineup. So hopefully you also had Saquon Barkley. Right. I think the big – one thing worth saying here as we reflect on Championship Sunday is that sometimes you just get dealt the wrong hand. I mean, if you have if you had DJ Moore, if you dealt with Zach Ertz's rib injury, if you dealt with Kyler missing some of that time, Derrick Henry's inactive – Look, you don't control any of that. All you can do is pivot with the information you have, and you can't pivot in the middle of a football game. Yep. So sometimes the breaks go that way, the highs and lows of fantasy football, and that's just that's just the way it is. And for Washington, Dwayne Haskins, he ended up getting carted off with an ankle injury. He was playing very very well for Dwayne Haskins. I think he was twelve for thirteen. It wasn't it wasn't just, just two numbers touchdowns. Where if you were watching him play, 
He looked like a competent quarterback. That's an excellent sign. Ho hopefully there's something that he can look back on for this season. For fantasy football purposes, though, you, I don't expect Haskins to come back in Week 17. That means it's Case Keenum. Scary that Terry. Means you can stream Case Keenum, and that means Terry McLaurin gets a huge upgrade for Week 17 championship. How about uh, if if he is okay? Yeah, we need we need an update on Terry McLaurin from the the concussion play. Yeah, you mean the incredible catch that? Yes. Nobody in the NFL should hold on to that ball, but he did. He because he's so is good, really good. Um, I think Sims? he would be happy to. Oh yeah, st for a waiver wire pickup for yeah. Week 17. Steven Sims? If you've got Case Keenum, a competent quarterback, and a questionable scary Terry right now, Steven Sims, a name you might not know, um, has been dominating the last three weeks, hugely involved in the in the offense. It looks like they might have a player there for the future. Dynasty owners should pick him up on waivers. He's still out there in most dynasty leagues. Well, he, he basically took um, the, jo the slot receiver job from Trey Quinn when Quinn went on to IR, and now he's he's right. taking advantage of it. Uh, weekly Rewind News and Notes brought to you by the Sleeper app. Before we get into the official Studly segment of the show, mm. we want to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring. Uh, look, perfect. Championship show uh, and a championship partner in SeatGeek. With millions of live event tickets from sports to live music, comedy, and more, SeatGeek has the tickets you're looking for all in one place. Uh, the three of us. We just booked a comedy show we for did. Valentine's Day. A little Nate Bargatze action. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> Look, Seat Geek rates each deal you see on the app on a scale of one to ten. Displays them on an interactive seating map. Green dots mean good deals. Red dots mean they're overpriced. You don't have to. You know, they just make it simple to search for the tickets and grab them, and then not worry about it anymore. And that's why they have fifty thousand five star reviews. We've all got the app. We've been using it for years, and it just genuinely is. It's like the, you know, the quickest possible way to get a good deal and move on. I mean, you want the tickets to the events you want. SeatGeek will even give you $10 off your first SeatGeek purchase. All you got to do is use our promo code. Download the SeatGeek app today and use the promo code BALLERS for $10 off on your first purchase. That's the promo code BALLERS for $10 off your first purchase. Want to thank today's sponsor, Quip. The holiday shopping season is here. It's almost over. Yeah, look, you, you want to get you want to get things going in the right direction. How about building up good habits with Quip? It's a toothbrush. It's the only toothbrush you need. In my entire family, we are out or we are outfitted with the Quip because it's an electric toothbrush. They've got refillable floss. They've got toothpaste, and it's got these sensitive, sensitive sonic vibrations and a timer with thirty second pulses to guide your routine. That's what we're talking about with good habits. Make sure you're brushing your teeth the correct amount of time. Because, uh, look, we, we all can get a little bit lazy when it comes to brushing your teeth. Think, ah, I've, yeah. I've brushed long enough. Well, your quip, your quip's going to let you know, no. You'd think after 30 years of brushing, you'd be done. You, you'd you be done think, by now. You would think that. <laughs> but quip makes it really easy. And they also have refill plans. So they're going to get you a new uh, toothbrush head every three months. They got it right on just the subscription. They, so you don't even have to think about it. Your teeth will thank you. And right now you can go to getquip.com slash footballers. You're going to save on gift sets. Get your first refill free with a refill plan. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash footballers. Getquip.com slash footballers. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. You know, I, I'm going to get into the quarterback studs, Jason, but I just saw some pretty Jason-relevant news come oh, through. Fantastic. Um. Phillip Rivers, quarterback for the Los Angeles Chargers. Has retired. He confirms that he wants to continue playing in 2020. Well, sure, but, I mean, <laughs> me too, Phillip. You know, when it's when when we're done, we're done. So, uh, good luck. and um, Merry I, Christmas. And Merry, Merry Christmas <laughs> to you and your enormous family. Uh, I wish you the best. I genuinely wish you an awesome retirement. <laughs> Like, genuinely, I wish you the an so awesome retirement. The sooner you can enjoy it, the better, to, according to Jay. Get to that life. Uh, it's going to suit you very well. They're 5 and 10. That's not good. It's not good, Bob. That whole season, say what you will about the value, not, you know, how Eckler performed. Like, just the bungling. The bungling of the Gordon situation. I don't know who's at fault. Probably Gordon, but, you know, 
it just gets your whole – this was a team that could have won a Super Bowl it, or close to it. I mean, they, they were going to compete in that division. They're and, supposed to. And now they're, their window's done. I mean, it's over. All right, studs, let's talk about some players that blew up, you know, like Daniel Jones, Andy Dalton, holy, and Ryan Fitzpatrick. Holy freaking Daniel Jones. 350 <laughs> yards, five touchdowns. Yeah. T number one on the week. Darius Slayton owners. Oh, baby pissed. Oh, man. I mean, if you're telling me that Daniel Jones throws for 350 and five. And has no soup for I, Darius Slayton. Yeah, that's. 28 completions, five touchdowns, incredible performance against Washington. And, uh, you know, look at him in week 17. Daniel Jones yep. now has as many four-plus passing touchdown performances as Troy Aikman had in his entire career. What? Just tells you how the game's changed so yeah, much, right? I know. It's a stupid Unbelievable. Stat, Michael Vick as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, when a rookie can come in who's been as actually up and down as Daniel Jones on the field, like for wins and losses, and can break those records of Michael Vick and Troy Aikman's careers in one season, the NFL is into uh, the offense. Well, and good. players are just getting, you know, getting better. New York, congratulations. You found your own Jameis Winston. Oh, that's very nice. That's so sweet. Enjoy. So <laughs> nobody <laughs> enjoy. Nobody really played Daniel Jones. Maybe in a two quarterback league. Um, I did see some people that uh, threw out Andy Dalton. They were in a pinch and they needed some guys. Yeah. We mentioned them on the show. Yeah. And that game was bananas. Uh, yeah, bananas. You mean when um, the game was over? Cincinnati got blown out, and yes. they, they lost in a major blowout, and they had the stinkiest garbage time touchdown of all times. And I believe you said that's the stinkiest. And then it turned out they came back and tied the game and went to yes. overtime. It was a tremendous argument against your hatred of garbage time because <laughs> that was garbage. That time. was super garbage time. <laughs> that was the, and they, they were at the dump. Yeah. And then they came back and sent the game to overtime. Yeah, they Febrezed the heck out of that dump, <laughs> and it turned into a real game. And four touchdowns later, Tyler Boyd, huge week. Oh, the number one wide receiver on the week yeah. is Tyler Boyd, your start of the week. Feels great. And then John Ross had a very solid afternoon. I was freaking out because I started John Ross over Robbie Anderson and felt like a dummy dumb. When Robbie scored, like, right off the bat. Yep. But John Ross somehow outpaced him. Ryan Fitzpatrick, Mike said it many, many moons ago. Welcome back, by the way. I, we, that got buried in the whole thing. But ah. Welcome back to the show, Mike. Yeah, it's good to be back. Um, five weeks ago, I mean, we talked about it. Mike mentioned it. Ryan Fitzpatrick was going to win people titles. And if you trusted him over the last five weeks, he's finished the fifth, third, 19th, seventh, and third. You mean the quarterback, quarterback. four? Yes. <laughs> the quarterback four over like the last five. If you average those numbers. Yes. No, I'm, I'm saying his total fantasy production is the quarterback four over the last five weeks. The only players who have scored more fantasy points at quarterback are Lamar Jackson, Drew Brees, and Jameis Winston. Then it's Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick out there winning championships. Yes. I feel like Ryan Fitzpatrick is so fancy free. Like, he leaves the stadium puts on a pair of sunglasses, and rides off yes. in a speedboat. I mean, there is just – I don't even know if he's near water, but he rides off in a speedboat. There's he's in no, Miami. He, there's he, no doubt. It doesn't – he could be in Kentucky, and he's riding off in a speedboat. You speed know boat that's what he's doing. For sure. He's getting in the back of the speedboat while the truck drives it away. Oh, yeah. Because that's how he leaves. <laughs> he's so just happy to be alive. Think about how good Which Ryan – he should be. Oh, yeah. Think about how good Ryan Tannehill's been for fantasy. Just been a dominant – Right, quarterback. Second best, Ryan. Still, he, he still did. He outscored. I mean, Ryan and Ryan, these two guys have won people so many championships. St. Louis, Cincinnati, Buffalo, Tennessee, Houston, New York Jets, Tampa, Miami. Congratulations! All have had the ex the speedboat experience. Lamar Jackson. Whew, oh pump, man, he, he pump faked you. He he put the sweats, put the fear of God in you because. Like I had said with, with Mark Andrews, who had scored essentially zero points with a minute and 18 seconds left in the first half, Lamar Jackson was sitting right there. He was, in fact, negative for a large chunk of the first half. But then he Lamar Jackson's, and, and everything was okay. Um, Ryan Tannehill, nice game again. Yeah, he's been he's been outstanding. Drew Brees, I think he was number six on. He's number six so far on the week. 
another monster game uh, on the road. When yeah. you look at uh, you know this upcoming week, players having something to play for. If you're stuck in a week 17 title game, first of all, fix your league. Yes. I mean, like, uh, I talked to somebody this week, and then I was like, ah, oh, hopefully you're not one of those six percent in the week 17 games. And he's like, yeah, we are. And I'm like, why? And he's like, because we because we are. <laughs> because you haven't changed it. And you, and you can't change it right now. No, but. no. But, I mean, look, Lamar Jackson now got you to your Week 17 championship. Have fun with Case Keenum in in the championship game. Yeah, because or, Lamar, or Andy Dalton. Right, because Lamar Jackson is, you know, there's a good chance he doesn't play football this to, week. You could go to Jared Goff sure. against Arizona. I understand. I like that. There, Jared yeah. Goff against Arizona is a good pickup. There's probably some of you saying, look, more fantasy is better. You want more weeks. The truth is, is you want fantasy to reflect itself over the course of the year. Like you don't want Week 17 to be this island of misery that doesn't reflect who's you know you 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 took your chance on Lamar Jackson late in the draft. Congratulations, you don't get him. That's not how you want fantasy to end. Right? Nope. No, I I want I want who was the best team through the year, who put up the who basically did the best job. They they drafted the best players. They made the right calls. They win. And when you draft the best players and they get you there and then they don't play, not because of injury, but because they were too good, that just stinks. <laughs> so, really, Daniel Jones and Andy Dalton are my favorite Week 17 streamers because Dalton has something to play for. He's not going to return to that team most likely. Are we sure that Tyler Boyd is okay? I know he came, he back. came back. Yeah, we, I know he came back, but that swelling comes up. That would take him off a of streamer consideration. Okay. But if you have Boyd and Ross, both who both came back on the field after little – injuries if they're back out there that's good because they play Cleveland at home and Dalton has something to play for same with Daniel Jones I mean Daniel Jones and the Giants could disrupt the their division mates entire season Philadelphia and Philadelphia is very vulnerable Daniel Jones is a great streaming option this week I'm not sure that I would stream them over Jared Goff now Jared Goff on the flip side does doesn't He's have got anything nothing to play, to play for. for I think Arizona shows up in that game yeah they might defensively and they they've yeah. been playing a lot better defensively over the sure. last three weeks uh is that game in arizona or is, is that in la it's in la it is in la <laughs> that's what i was i used <laughs> cut me off brooks i was in the process of saying <laughs> yes it is we have no in LA. in la yeah but then you were like no <laughs> yes, i'm talking now it's not <laughs> <laughs> all right running backs we've talked about them saquon barkley have a day oh my Look, gosh saquon and it was it was immediate it was, it, it was entirely it was, it was, at all points. You didn't watch Saquon Barkley struggle for three quarters, build up your hope, and then have him just gut you like a fish. No, it was it was the whole, the whole entire time. Yeah, he it, twisted the knife for four quarters yeah. and uh, broke we, his all-time record for rushing yardage. I kept seeing them replay his breakaway where he comes in through the hole and he goes to the mm, right and he runs yep. up that right sideline. And then over and over I realized that's not a replay. I'm not watching them. Re this is a new one of the, the same, exact play. same play. You know what's weird is we talk about the truth episodes and how like one anomalous performance shouldn't define a season. But the truth of the actual Saquon Barkley, like him trying to make up his whole season in one week, probably better reflects the truth of Saquon going into next year than anything could. Because if you looked at how we finished on the end of the year without this game, you're not going to use that to draft Saquon next year. It's been a very weird year. The rookie quarterback, the injuries... But now maybe the truth has been put in order thanks to 189 rushing yards and 90 receiving yards. You know, it's funny. I brought up on the show last week how much time it has taken Saquon and Alvin Kamara to get over their high ankle sprains. There that, you go. That coming back from this, it, they, they, they haven't really looked themselves. And now time has passed and both had pretty monster weeks. Yeah, getting better kind of matters. Just ask James Conner's opportunities. Will Fuller, they always – I don't know if people are rushing Will Fuller at this point. Or if like rushing Will Fuller means ever playing again, I don't know the answer to that question. But when you can go out there and pull something in, you know, eighty percent of your eighty percent of your runs of your routes re are pulled <laughs> result in injury. Kenyon Drake, twenty four for one sixty six and two. Why? Why Kenyon did you do Drake, this to me, Kenyon? I believe Kenyon Drake will be. I'm not going to guarantee it, but I believe he'll be the starting running back for the Arizona Cardinals next year. If you read. Uh, what people are writing around Arizona, the big problem with David Johnson in this offense has been learning the offense under Cliff Kingsbury and being the kind of running back that can take a read option situation like Lamar Jackson does with Mark Ingram and do something with it. Speed to the outside, Kenyon Drake's 
monster performances in Arizona. It is a perfect fit for this offense. Yeah, yeah. it works out. The problem will be for Arizona, the money situation, because they they still they, owe David Johnson a ton of money. David Johnson won't be here next year. I they will either cut no him chance. and take a dead cap, and I realize the enormous dead cap they'll take him, or they'll pay for his salary and trade him to another team like Tampa Bay and get some pick in exchange but or, my, my point or is half the salary. How, as a team, it will be – you'll have to be very wise with your management of – Managing his contract and then ponying up money for a new running back. Like you can't have, no. you can't commit like fifteen, twenty percent of your budget. It, it, to, they have to flexibility though because of the Kyler Murray contract. More flexibility so, than most teams have. I did you hear David Johnson was trying to return kicks? Did yes, you hear this? He asked to he get asked on the to field return to return kicks because he just wants to be out. I feel so bad for that situation. Yeah. It's kind of a weird sunsetting of David Johnson on this show because he's been a darling of the podcast for years. He's won championships. One of our favorite players of all time, I yeah. would say. Yeah, and, we, and we've and we had the opportunity to meet him and his family, and they're Great amazing guy. people. He's the Walter Payton Man of the Year here in, in Arizona, like the nomination from mm -hmm. our team. So it's just really difficult to see the transition. But uh, at the end of the day, fit matters in the NFL. And certain players, look at what Nagy, right or wrong, he decided one day that Jordan Howard didn't fit. It didn't mean Jordan Howard stunk. He had a good year in Philly. David Johnson can go have a good year someplace. Yeah, He's just David not a Johnson fit. Johnson is traded to Bruce Arians next year. I'll be so happy for him because he knows how to use him. He knows how to use him as a wide receiver. Yeah, he'll have a huge year there. Yeah, potentially. The, and, but for Kenyon Drake, I mean, he let everybody know what he's looking for yes. when he when he scored the. If you did not see his eighty yard touchdown, his his touchdown celebration was him breaking into a safe. And collecting money. J putting a giant money bag <laughs> over his shoulder and walking away. So he might be playing himself out of Arizona <laughs> because they might not be able to afford to keep him. I, I He forgets he's a running back. The that, last, safe was I, way, I, that safe was way too big in the celebration. It wasn't the running back safe. He opened the wide receiver safe right. and took all the wide receiver money. look at the running back and be like, wait. Did someone someone already robbed this safe? What happened? Where's we, all the money? He needed we, to do one of those really <laughs> tiny flat little gun safes. Like that a hold oh, one. No, a hotel safe. Beep, there you beep, go. Beep, beep. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, is I got it's your just, wallet. We've been here with Tevin Coleman, who had monster games last year. It's just there's not a lot of money floating out there when you could pay a third round pick for a rookie running back. Devonta Freeman. Hey oh. Start of the week. I loved that he took care of business so soon in this game. First two touches were touchdowns. Which is ridiculous. And then I could breathe easy with yeah. that recommendation. 13 for 53 and 1, 9 for 74 and 1 on 11 targets. I thought he actually looked like a good player in this game. There had been earlier games in this season that he looked slow. He looked a little more spry. Well, a similar situation for what we had been lamenting for David Johnson is you need to get him involved with targets. Yep. To get the real Devonta Freeman experience, to get the running back that you paid for a couple years ago. You need to throw him the ball, and it unfortunately took a sixteen a, weeks. <laughs> well, it took that, and it took a depleted wide receiver core before they said, "Oh, we should throw Freeman the ball." Oh, there he is! And this super Camario being back is fantastic because a lot of people still got to their championships with Camara, and they were super disappointed. And he, he, he. Came through. 11 for 82 touchdowns, seven targets, six receptions, 30 yards, looked good, broke tackles. Miles Sanders, 20 for 79 and one, five for 77 on six targets. Mike's long distance start yes. of the week. He will be fascinating for what's going to happen with the backfield in Philadelphia this offseason. Jordan Howard is on a contract year, so they would have to re-up him to bring him back. They Doug Peterson, at least his actions in the past, have said that he wants to have a full-on running back committee. But since Jordan Howard went out, there's been no committee. It's been Miles Sanders, who was a second-round draft pick. So he's he's going to be they'll, very interesting to see what happens. They'll bring in a compliment. But, you know, Doug Peterson what has level? said their objective here. I mean, they spent a second-round pick on Miles Sanders, who is performing. And if they make themselves to the playoffs and, you know, there was a time when Jay Ajayi was there where there was not a committee in the past. It was so, like, like three weeks. Yeah, well, but where they gave him all the work. And <laughs> right. Miles Sanders is earning it right now. Sure.
but they'll bring in a compliment because this is the NFL and that's what they do. Christian McCaffrey, 15 for 119 as a wide receiver, 13 for 54 as a running back, and uh, he's the first running back in NFL history with back-to-back 100 reception seasons. He has the second most receptions in the first three seasons in NFL history behind Michael Thomas, a wide receiver. How is that possible? No wide receiver in the history of the NFL has as many receptions in their first three seasons as Christian McCaffrey, the running back, has outside of Michael Thomas. That is insane. And that's why you – he look, you want to talk about someone who truly people rode to a championship. Saquon Barkley, we saw in the the Monday Punday, a lot of Saquon Barkley owners were not in the championship. Now, if you were, you You were happy. You won. But, well, not necessarily. (laughs) Shout out to Papa Josh. You lost with Saquon. Um, but, uh, no, uh, you know, Christian McCaffrey is the true hero, him and Lamar Jackson, so consistent the entire season, did it in championship week, got you there. Kudos. Uh, and we know who the number one pick is next year. Yes. Yeah. We don't have to, recent years, there's been some debate. There's no debate, right? I mean, it's Christian not, McCaffrey. Lamar Jackson. <laughs> 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 no, CMC, incredible year. Honorable mention, studs. That might have got you a title. Philip Lindsay, Melvin Gordon, DeAndre Washington, Ronald Jones, Marlon Mack. Nice yep. start of the week there, Jason. Jo- uh, Todd Gurley, a couple of touchdowns. Mark Ingram, Damian Williams. Damian Williams. Yeah. Mike mentioned uh, Damian on the live stream on Sunday morning. Got me a little bit more enthusiastic because he came off of the injury designation completely. And then Shady ended up in, it improved. It improved later on that night. So, um, wide receivers: Tyler Boyd, number one on the week, nine for one twenty-eight and two on fifteen targets. Michael Thomas. Michael mm. Thomas broke the all-time record for receptions in a season with one week to go. <laughs> he broke it in week sixteen. Mm. Yeah, you, you know. I mean, it's he, the can new re- N- he can rest. It's the new NFL, so you know, there's more passing, but. That's still very impressive. Double cover him. Every, they do. <laughs> not every play. That's true, and they should. I would double cover him every play and say, fine, you want you want Cook? 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 To, cook? Cook to beat me? Good. Fine. I'll take my chances. You know that yeah, Cook will beat you, though. Eh, some of the time. Bre- Breeze will beat you, not Cook. Some Breeze of the will time. beat you. Um, waiver wire wise, by the way, shout out to Kyle, our editor in chief, who wrote up Tajay Sharp as a DFS target this week. Because of the Lattimore treatment that was coming uh, A.J. Brown's way. And Tajay Sharp went out and scored two touchdowns, five for 69. Blast from the past here. Adam Humphreys was inactive in this game. Are you, you know, if you're a Week 17 waiver player, are you looking at somebody like Hunter Renfro, who was seven for 107 and one, or Steven Sims or Tajay Sharp? Any uh, of those guys? Not yeah. Hunter Renfro going up against Denver. I think if I'm looking at any of those guys, it might actually be Steven Sims just because he's been so involved. And if he gets a quarterback upgrade with Case Keenum. For me, it's Renfro. Really? At yeah. Denver? Yeah, totally fine with it. Okay. Yeah, he was just so heavily involved. And he's you see that little burst when he catches the ball. He's, he's got good, he's got he's some a good player. And you know they're not out of the playoffs. Now the, the Raiders are not eliminated. <laughs> Actually, no, here's what's, here's what's crazy. So the four things, they have to have four different games go exactly according to their need. I mean, the, the I, statistical I got them if you odds, want them. but I think there's a shot that this happens. Read it. So uh, they're seven and eight. Um, what they need to do is they need to win at Denver. They need uh, the Steelers to lose at Baltimore. Though okay, both good. of those things are very possible, right? Yep. They need the Titans to lose to the Texans. Possible. And the Colts to win to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Probable. Against the uh, against Jacksonville. So I think it's possible, probable, possible, probable. Now, when you put all those things together like a parlay, it's probably not. I mean, it's not going to happen. It's tough. But it's at least it's do not you, like. Let me ask you this. Do you want it to happen? Yes. Do you oh, want, I very much want it to happen. Do you want Derek Carr in the playoffs? Hunter Renfro? No, I don't the want Walrus. them in the pe- playoffs. I just want the crazy want odds. Yes, I just want the chaos. I, want I, the, I hadn't read the four things that have to happen. Those all seem very, very possible. Which means that three of them will happen, and then they'll lose to Denver in horrible fashion. Yes. Oh, I hope three of them will happen. Else happens, and then they can't beat Denver. It stinks. Those that would infer that the Titans are knocked out. I'd rather see the Titans in the playoffs. 
Then, uh, then the Raiders just more go, deserving. Yes, the, the Raiders more are, talented. The Raiders in in the playoffs. I'm sorry, Oakland fans are just a warm up game. But it's funny because <laughs> the he, first round for somebody like Houston needs to. <laughs> they are a warm up game. Who do we got? It's the opening band. I mean, <laughs> yes. Who do we got out here before the real matchup? Here's the thing, though. I, Tennessee deserves it. Tennessee though is facing their division. I mean, the Texans could knock Tennessee out of the playoffs here. Yep, it's going to be crazy. Um, also, you you asked you know Hunter Renfro or uh, some other guys. I want to throw Greg Ward out there as uh, another free agent pickup. If you're in Week 17, this is a game that obviously the Eagles need to win against the New York Giants. Their secondary is terrible. Uh, Zach Ertz is banged. Everybody's banged up. If you if you've caught a ball for the Eagles. You're injured. And John Ross. I mean, Mike brought it up. Tyler Boyd was a little banged up, and John Ross had another nice game uh, worth a glance. A.J. Brown, by the way, if you want to know what happened, he only caught one pass in this entire game. Now, he saved your fantasy day yeah. with a 49-yard rushing touchdown, but only one catch against Marshawn Lattimore. Um, I haven't gone through and watched every – you know, route he's run. He so really only had two targets. Yeah, I, that's what I was gonna say. I don't Come know if he on, wasn't man. wasn't winning, or if this was more like, hey, why mess with Brown when we can go to Tajay Sharp? Hey, eighty-two yards and a touchdown total. I am I am super happy with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah just uh, he's still one he's catch. Still big. <laughs> All right, um, moving on. Other waiver wire considerations to look at. Anthony Miller destroyed people last night. Yes. Yes. including my eight-year-old boy who started oh. him in a flex position and now might not win the title because of it. I oh. think he's going to win. Well, he has Aaron Jones. Yes. And his opponent has Mike Boone, and it's whoever. It's basically heads up. That's close. Do you but still believe would, it when I say it out loud? Yeah. That Mike I mean, Boone's going to – Aaron Jones will outscore him? I would start Aaron Jones over Mike Yeah, Mike we said Boone. that last week. Yeah. Um, Brashad Perryman, Justin Watson face Atlanta next week. Those guys can be looked at. Um, yeah. Anybody else yeah. you guys want to talk no, about? Justin Watson, I think is he's a perfectly fine waiver ad. Superstar. He was, uh, no. <laughs> 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 but on the field, a lot running routes for with uh, Jameis Winston, who will throw a bunch of touchdowns certainly this I week. I think to, to speak for my friend Jason, I think he meant superstar relative to like the like the United States population. Like, if That's you're fair. in That's the fair. National Football League. I would love him on my flag football team. Oh, could, dude, he'd dominate. Yeah, he I would. I would target him, Look, probably. I, I, I know. He would, he would be targeted every single play. I know. <laughs> I, I know, but over the last three games when he's had an opportunity, he's on pace for 11 touchdowns over 16 games. So <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good pace. But yeah, thank you. Uh, uh -huh. Double digits. He's a superstar. Greg Ogletree <laughs> is also on pace for <laughs> infinite. Um, tight end studs, Mark Andrews, Jared Kuk. Jared Kuk. Mike Gesicki. All three of those I'm guys getting tricky. Mike, got the double touchdown. Yeah. Mike Gesicki, Devontae Parker, players who were left for dead because someone, I won't name any names, Adam Gase. couldn't figure out how to use them. Yeah. And now yeah. they both look like potential superstars. Well, not just anyone them, can but figure also out Kenyon how to Drake. use Also Kenyon Drake. Anyone can figure out also how to use. Also Kenyon Drake. Oh, yes. Oh, oh wait. And Ryan Tannehill. Yes. What a – he sucks, man. The, he the word you're looking, the NFL. The word you're looking for is – to finish the sentence is butthole. <laughs> yes. You were trying to finish the sentence yes. with what a butthole. I would, my, my brain started just shorting out with, with rage. How was this man employed? They Peyton just beat Manning. the Steelers. Peyton Manning is how that man they is employed. They beat – they just beat the Steelers, They beat the Mike. Steelers who went back and forth like multiple times on who the quarterback was yeah. in the game. Yeah, well, they had it was to literally bench. duck, duck, Rudolph. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had to bench their fourth string guy because he was so bad that they then brought in their third string guy who got them back in the game, who got injured, and then they brought back in their fourth string guy. Wait, is that really the level we're at? Fourth string? That's how it feels. Okay. It's, it's you've, you've knocked him down a rung. It's what they deserve. There's empty airspace for the like QB3. There's an something. honorary QB2. Okay. A second quarterback. There's a place for the a future, second string. A future backup. A future backup who's better than these guys. Oh, Dallas Goddard. Nine for 91 and one. He, at one point, 
had 82 targets in a row. <laughs> it sure like, seemed that there way. There were like two drives where yeah. no one else was targeted. And as they didn't cover him facing against Zach Ertz, the struggle is real yes. <laughs> between 86 and 88 because every catch is like, no, yes. Yeah. Yeah, if if basically if Zach Ertz had more March on lunch, he would look like Dallas Goddard. <laughs> they really need to have one of them change their numbers, like <laughs> no, as, as part of their trap. Yeah. All right, uh, Kittle, nice game. Kelsey, the studs taking care of you. Uh, John New Smith ended up with a big touchdown. Uh, you know, Houston next week. Tyler Higby. That is a that is a name. Look, uh, we we Higby, were worried baby, one more time when Everett came back. That it, sucks, it man. would it would hurt Higby because Higby has done all of the damage while Everett was out and Everett had done damage before Higby did damage exactly. Right. But goodness gracious, eleven targets, nine receptions, another hundred yard game. Tyler Higby is for real. Uh, I I mean, at this point, you have to just continue to play and trust him. He is used. They they've found something in him. I mean, Andy, you were bringing this up. I think yesterday when we were just watching football or, or sometime off the air, you can't luck your way into four 100-yard games in, no. the, in the National Football League. You are talented. You And are, paid. Yeah. Yes. They so, paid him this past offseason. So yeah. Higby very well might be just a true level up here. Would either of you guys like to give an official um, vocalized uh, middle finger of sorts to O.J. Howard? <laughs> I mean, O.J. Howard um, essentially at every turn – for the duration of the whole season, including this game because of mistakes, not just opportunity problems. He had hurt you. At least uh, he ended up – where Where did he finish on the week? Uh, it c couldn't have been good. Last three, in my heart. Three for 46 was his final line. So it's – I mean – And people pivoted from Higby to Howard, which we said that I, we would do. Mm-hmm. And then Howard was targeted in open field for, like, maybe two touchdowns? Yes, the, there were two, at least two instances of him just streaking down the sideline. One, he let the ball hit him in the forearm, and then the other one he just dropped. It, it, it felt really, really bad. Because O.J. Howard comes down with one of those, you just, just one of those, then he had a great game. But instead, he was the what? currently the tight end, like, 18. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. All right. Disappointing end of the season for Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Dak Ugh. Prescott. You didn't let me jump in there. What were you going to say? I wanted to present Russell Wilson. Oh, you wanted to present? I'm sorry. Russell Wilson, currently the quarterback 25 on the week. Stinkers of Ugh. the season for Mike. <laughs> What was that? Is that an exhale? Yes. Like a real gross it, exhale? That was, that was the, uh, somehow I lost my bet, even though I feel Mike, like, you won. like this, the you won. spirit was, but I lost. You entirely won in every way, shape, and form other I than the, the bet. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Jameis, we know what Jameis did. Philip yeah. Rivers stunk. Jimmy G, not a great game. Did do enough to win the ball game, though. Uh, moving into next season, when you look at players like Russell Wilson, like Deshaun Watson, uh, Dak Prescott, is this souring anything for you? It's, uh, it's no. I wouldn't say that it's souring things for me. It's just hopefully people. This is a good reminder. Don't take your quarterback early. It, you can replace them. Guys like Ryan Fitzpatrick. If you're new to fantasy football and you're like, holy crap, Ryan Fitzpatrick, this this is a total anomaly. This guy who's a Travel, journeyman quarterback came in here and is winning people championships. No, because it happens every single year. Every, every single year, year there is uh, usually a few quarterbacks that you can scoop up off of waivers and ride to championships. That happens. I mean, I, I don't. I can't remember a year where that hasn't happened. And I love that the biased Dolphins fan who just plays his players all the time like totally won titles. <laughs> I mean, that, if you were like a, I'm playing my yeah. guys. I love the Dolphins. I love it. Kasicki. Parker. Well, yeah, I mean, thankfully you stopped playing Rosen. I mean, otherwise <laughs> you weren't doing much. Running back stinkers, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, Just hugely disappointing games. The team. James White, nothing. Austin Eckler, a bad finish to a year when you counted on him. Not that bad, though, in a PPR league. Five for 58 on six targets. Joe Mixon, 
Disappointing finish against Miami. Very disappointing. Found out before the game that he was sick. And I, you know, I still was not going to bench him in the sense that he was, he had one of the, you know, top five matchup. He's been excellent, but obviously uh, he, he was, he was legit sick. I mean, he looked a little sluggish. He didn't Michael Jordan it. He would, he didn't go out there with the flu and drop 55. You know, he was out there. 55! <laughs> Uh, I feel like you set him up for that. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it was very disappointing. Uh, anybody else? David Montgomery. He had a few runs last night that I thought, I was like, oh, there's an NFL player. Uh, it's 13 for 57. <laughs> wow, I didn't see those plays. You didn't? He, he no. did actually have a couple really nice runs. I saw all of the others. Did you hear? I mean, they're the only team in the entire National Football League that has not had like a 40-yard play. Yes. Wow. Well, but uh, is it a forty-yard touchdown or is it a forty-yard play? I think it was play. a forty-yard play. But what was insane to me was that that was also true of the Saints until yesterday. That's correct. No, but it, like McCall Hardman and Tyreek each have four already. Each makes sense. It, it, he didn't come through. He wasn't somebody that I really wanted to play this particular week. You might have been forced into it because he'd been so good. But Devin Singletary only fifteen for forty-six against the the Patriots. But I just want to highlight his name because the the transformation's complete. Yes, he I, I I saw a number. He was it was like fifty two of fifty four snaps, or or so. Like, do you know how many carries Frank Gorin did the game with? How many? None. Yeah, it, that's what I mean. Devin Singletary. Do you know how excited I am to have Devin Singletary yes. in our in my dynasty league and in my keeper league? That's why I wanted to bring him up. Of his his value is is going up this is why you pay attention at at the end even if you were out of the playoffs unfortunately you need to be watching for these things of okay well is Devin Singletary was he still kind of the the bit part Are they going to look for someone else no Singletary's their dude going forward and they're a great team yes uh let's talk about Tyler Lockett's Oh, yeah. Let's talk about not Lockett. Now, now real uh, quick, I don't feel like... Not Lockett. 53rd, 60th, 135, eight. 51, 6th, 90th. Six, five out of the last six weeks, he was unplayable. Now, here's the thing. When you come to a week like this where everything comes down to your matchup, I don't feel like stinkers of the week is a pro... Like, when I look at Tyler Lockett, he was a superstar. He really came through. Bru <laughs> He really because you played against because him. I played against him, and so you know I want to be positive with these stinkers. MVP of your team. He was he was he might be, um, you know. I hope you played against all the players we're bringing up here. Yeah, through the first nine weeks of the NFL season, let me see where Lockett was here, um, which was by the way when that Russell Wilson guy <laughs> was a little bit better. Yeah, it's not a surprise that uh, wide receiver 4 Russell through Wilson the first 9 weeks and Tyler Lockett were on fire and when Russell is bad, Lockett is bad, when Lockett is bad, Russell is bad. It's a chicken or the egg situation. Was it the injury to Lockett the kind of uh, Remember last year when Thielen started, he was he's broken the season right in half. First half was amazing. Lockett's first half of the season was wide receiver 3. His second half of the season was wide receiver 60. Oof. And he, he didn't – like, I know he got hurt in a game, but he didn't technically miss any. I will be all in on Tyler Lockett Maybe the Minnesota year. game. You'll be all in on him? Yeah, because I, I think that – I mean, depending – I mean, we, we don't know where the average draft position is, but I do believe Tyler Lockett is a good player, and I do believe Russell Wilson is a good player, and so that's enough for me. Like, uh, you, It's just tough because uh, in his career, you have not – more often than not, that decision would have been bad through his whole career. Yeah, due to injuries, yeah. So maybe you look at the injury. We've been risk. over this. It wasn't due to injuries. He plays. He doesn't he had he's barely missed any games. He plays injured. Okay, fine. Every year? But but, yes. but the eight then targets, don't play him. I mean the eight targets and coming down with one for twelve is very disappointing. Is there a chance and we'll talk about this ad nauseum through the off season, but is there a chance that DK Metcalf becomes the one, just takes over it? Mm. He, yes. He's more is, prototypical. Yeah. Exactly. I was, uh, he's drafted to be a star wide receiver, and he's shown – he's impressed me his rookie season. Not yesterday. Certainly not. He is also a goose. Only one target. At least mm. Tyler Lockett – I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing <laughs> that Tyler Lockett had eight targets. Um, the template there would be like an Alshon Jeffrey with a D-Jax on the outside. I mean, Lockett is going to give you the monstrous plays, but the more and more that they can rely on someone like Metcalf on the – 
you know, the, the shorter prototypical routes, I think they will. Um, it has nothing to do with these guys. It has to do with what the team does philosophically. Do they, do they let the guy that they paid uh, infinite money to, Russell Wilson, be the quarterback? Or do they continue to be the a, run, no. a run-heavy team? You don't think that they do? No. I, I, it's baffling to me that they paid that much money for their quarterback and they want to be this 1990s running team. I mean, it's sort of working for them. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, it has worked for them. But then it just handcuffs your Lockett Metcalf consistency. Yep. Because yesterday, I don't know if you can get into a better game script. At home, down scores against Arizona. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know what else you could do. <laughs> Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Amari Cooper. Well, oh, come on, man. Did nobody say that it was a championship week? Uh, allow me. Amari Cooper, stinker of the week. 12 I'm sorry, targets. You needed to present four him, too. Four for 24. It was worse than four for 24. That's how I. Like, when I was watching that game, Amari Cooper. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Uh, he's, he's, he's hobbled. It's like Mike turned a switch. Halfway through the year, yeah. and he said, "I don't want to be wrong. I will use. I don't want to be wrong. I'm my gonna... power. Do you, is there a Horcrux somewhere? I don't. What did you do? I, I toil, toil, boil, trouble. What is the the witch's brew? I just stuck with the truth. I know, <laughs> I know. Well, and Amari Cooper's not healthy at all. I mean, twelve targets. Which you is, can blame it's, Dak. It's fair. But watch Amari Cooper try to jump. Watch him try to get open. Watch Randall Cobb." make all the important third down plays. This was not the Amari Cooper that was the wide receiver three through the first uh, six weeks of the season. Nevertheless, you thought he would be. A vi- you, you thought you'd get that at some point. That's what baited you into playing him. Mercifully, we didn't play him in the leagues that we had him. But The, the, thi- the thing for Amari Cooper, my entire argument this whole time has been he'll be a, he will be a top 12 wide receiver because he when he explodes, it's 200 yards and two touchdowns. But... His bust rate is – it's a 50% bust rate. And I, I don't know what it, what it is off the top of my head right now, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be right around 50%. But it'll be different this time. You know, the, the first seven weeks, he didn't bust, really. But over you know, the second – like, instead of it being ping-ponging, right. you've got a first half, second half problem. Amari Cooper is going to be a very interesting draft name. Yeah. Very interesting. Yes, he will. And Because it's going to come, just to be clear, if he's there – he got paid. Yes. He got paid big money. Yes. So wherever he goes, he's getting paid big money. T.Y. Hilton, not the same. Yeah. A lot of players playing through, like, injury, because if you look at – Hilton, he, Schuster, but He wants to let exactly. his team know. He wants to let him know that he can be counted on. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's that whole – that just happens. I, I mean, that's why Will Fuller's out there, guys. I mean, that's that's the NFL. If you want people to know you can be counted on, but you only come through with like three for twenty six, and you're a you're supposed to be a, a number one, like a, a top option in the NFL at the wide receiver position. Are you I, are you helping your case? I think you are. I think if T. Y. Hilton's running deep routes, Juju's running deep routes, and D. J. Chark's running deep routes, you help. All your right, team. that's that's fair. That's yeah. fair. Uh, but I mean, yeah, the T. Y. Hilton next year is going to be interesting too, with Brissett and coming off the injury and not having a good year. Yeah, and I, you know, Brissett looked bad on a lot of those throws. He did. I mean, he did. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me uh let me set you up for a second. <laughs> let me give you the breaking news. Thank you. Would you like to Brissette, elaborate? Yeah. So, on some of the throws <laughs> uh yesterday and the week prior the Brissett when he had the ball and he was to throw it, then he you would find the wide receiver and that wouldn't be where the ball goes. <laughs> 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 All right, Christian Kirk, he was hurt. I was super concerned all week long with the de- injury designations in Arizona because he had already been dealing with an injury. He put up a goose on five targets. Darius Slayton, the surprise goose of the year. This was the fear. The fear not that Slayton's bad, but that you don't know like which – you know, you're rolling the dice, and like there isn't on two one. sides, there's a shepherd, and then there's like a Tate well, on yeah, one side. Yeah, I was going to say between Tate and Shepard and Slayton, uh, someone's getting it done. But you, there isn't a clear cut one. There isn't a primary target, a first read. You don't know what the, who the defense is going to be playing, who on who, and so it's re- it's really tough 
on a week in week out basis to put your faith and your trust in any of those guys. Even, I mean, look, you were happy if you played Sterling Shepard. Yeah. Um, Darren Waller, as soon as Hunter Renfro came back, Darren wonder, Waller, four for 37. Look, Darren Waller has been a superstar for this show. He's, the the ride has been absolutely incredible. He was a free tight end that will finish as a tight end one. But head, it, we're, we're kind of looking at next year. Darren Waller next year. Top 12 tight end. Yeah. Top 12 just has draftable upside built in, but kind of vanishes when Hunter Renfro like see well, I, I, mean, I, I worry look about at the split I worry play- about Waller in the sense that when he has been super valuable is when they really needed him I I 100% think the Raiders are going to go out and get another uh, big another wide receiver. capital wide receiver either pay for it in free agency or draft one high I, I don't think they're looking at their wide receiver core thinking oh we're good here no they expected to have Antonio Brown Exactly. Right. So uh, when they add another piece, if they add another piece, I think that will 100% come at the expense of Darren Waller. I don't necessarily disagree. There are only a few players in the NFL that are athletically gifted enough to make the kind of big plays that can win you a week, and Waller is one of them. Darren Waller is – he's over 1,000 yards. Yeah, exactly. He's had a monstrous he's year. He's been great. There's only – like I said, there's only a few athletic guys. No fan is in that category next year where you're like, oh – no fan could catch three for 80 in a touchdown any week. Right. Certain players can't do that, and Waller just got paid big money. So my confidence level is, no, he's not a one. I mean, he's not your – he's not Kittle, Kelsey. He's not in right. that category, right? And we thought he might be at the beginning of the year. Yeah, the, the draft price will be very interesting. I really don't like looking at these the, – this list of tight end stinkers, Greg Olson, Noah Fant, <laughs> Jack Doyle. Because it's your team. Those were, those were my three your options. Your championship team? Yes. <laughs> those that- were my three – options because early 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 almost late last year let alone early this go year, on we you and i made a trade yes i got i got john ross uh-huh that's not too bad you you got a tight end you got mark andrews oh that's that i had forgotten <laughs> Yeah. It's all right. You're about to win a back-to-back title. That's you got, true. You got literally nothing to be sad about. Stinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best the in best. foot odor defense. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. All right, let's close this thing out. Defensive streamers, if you're in Week 17, the Colts play Jacksonville. Jacksonville, they cut another ring. They're so close to the end of the season. They've they're, been trying to finish things out. It's their Christmas ring calendar. You, yeah, we, we mentioned it on the Sirius XM show. They've got right. a little – they're counting it down to the end right. of the year, and the Colts get to play Jacksonville. You just don't have a lot of risk with Indianapolis because Jacksonville can't put up a no, big week. And then you have the upside of freaking Naheem Hines being a punt return monster. Yeah, was, that was pretty cool. What's happening? Yeah, that, that worked out as a good streamer from last week. For me – I want to play a team that is three out of the last four weeks giving up a top five performance. Uh, I want to play against, you know, this is defense versus offense. I want to find an offense that has a quarterback that can't do anything. And I've found it. It's David Blau, the Detroit Lions. Why you got to do him dirty like that? He in does the, himself dirty. In division, the <laughs> Packers have a... Take a bath, yes, Blau. And the Packers have a great <laughs> passing defense. You know, they're they're susceptible on the ground, but their pass D is good. You want to talk a pick six opportunity and, you know, win a week 17 championship on defense. I'm playing the Packers against David Blau at Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I will say I like your two more than mine. I think they carry less risk. But if you want some high upside, <laughs> Falcons are playing Tampa Bay. They're playing against Jameis Winston. It didn't work out the last time that they they matched up. But Jameis Winston, he's going to throw. He's going to throw at least one interception. It's, he's contractually obligated these days. At least one? At least you, one. You're start, that is a low bar for James. Uh, no, per no, quarter. It's at least one. It's at least one. He, he had been solid. Take a bath, Blau. <laughs> he's dirty. He's a he, dirty man. Yeah, he's like Oscar. The, oh, the grouch? The, the blouch. <laughs> no? Oscar it's the late. Like, it's pretty late I in the like show, it. so I think Oscar the Blouch like works. But, All right. but I think you can stream the Falcons. This segment brought to you by Head & Shoulders <laughs> and Walmart. Head & Shoulders offense for great hair. Defense against Flakes. Visit Head & Shoulders Walmart mm. Sweeps.com for your chance to win tickets to Super Bowl 50.
four. Get those flakes. Take a bath, Blau. All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a safe and wonderful holiday. Enjoy uh, uh, all the Kylo Ren, Josh Groban music you can. Any special things going on for you guys? Just winning championships I've been trying to petition tonight. for like new Christmas traditions that I want to introduce. Like I'm ready for a new one. But I want you don't, something special. But you haven't offered any? You have, you, have, you watched, have you watched Klaus yet? No, I haven't watched it yet. Come on, man. Hashtag well, I, not a sponsor. On Netflix, watch Klaus. It's great. I saw it's animated. Yes. It was good. It's fantastic. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm open. Doesn't Disney Plus have some sort of... Uh, yeah, there's just not... Noel yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Not good? Yeah, it, not, it's, uh, you gave it a shot? It's what every every year there's one or two of these Christmassy movies that come out, and there's just there's a Santa, and there's a yeah. Christmas what happening. What was the one last year with... Um, Christmas Chronicles with is, with, uh, with Russell. Yeah, yeah. Kurt Russell. Exa- yeah. It is identical to that. I as like far that as movie. Like, style and type I, and I level liked, I, I was in on it i thought that one was pretty good but klaus is better you, okay. i'm telling you you're, you're check gonna it out enjoy it very much all right it's a delight want to thank christmas I, delight james winston is on pace for 20 interceptions that's fine that's uh like rivers has wait like only 20 rivers has 18 winston's wins winston's got to be he, he he's has, already got to have 20 he has some games where he has thrown zero interceptions that's why i was saying it's at least one as impossible as it seems so he's having a great. No, year. He's, he's he's got twenty eight no, interceptions. He's on pace for thirty. Like I, that's where I thought. Yeah, you were that wrong. was confusing. Like, he's he's on pace to be a thirty and thirty guy. So if he throws <laughs> two more picks, he did. It. That's an unprecedentedly yes. bad interception total. Thirty? Yes. Yeah, he's got twenty eight right but now. The, wow. But the fact that you have thirty one touchdowns. He had thirty one interceptions last game. <laughs> that's incredible. He is. He's on pace for twenty. Well, checking in. He did it. Daniel Jones taking <laughs> Daniel Jones taking notes. I want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. As always, an Alvin Kamara signed jersey went for seventy three dollars yesterday. Head to pristineauction.com. Use the code Ballers to register and get yourself something nice to celebrate. Go celebrate. Buy your favorite player jersey at Pristine Auction. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everybody. We'll see you on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.